first with breaking Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Folari. A sad day for Africa, one of its sons, an icon in fact, talking about uh, flight lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. You know, his death was announced yesterday by no less than the president of uh, Ghana. May his soul rest in peace, first of all. Um, but the man, John Jerry um, Rawlings, who led Ghana as um, a military uh, head of state and then later on came to lead Ghana as um, a democratically elected president. And he didn't pull that feet, uh, pull off that feet once, but indeed uh, twice. Of course, you know, you can't say he was admired by all and sundry. Uh, in fact, he came to be, you know, engaged with democracy, you know, arguably, depending on how you look at it. But the story is that, as is available for all to know, he started off as a revolutionary, a military head of state. Even when he was in power, he wasn't enamored of multi-parties, but later on he came around, indeed formed one. I think it's the um, uh, National Democratic uh, Congress. He formed one. And by the way, they are in the middle of an electioneering, electioneering campaign in Ghana uh, right now. But all of that has put, uh, been put on suspension out of respect for the next uh, seven days. And the president has um, expectedly ordered the lowering of flags to um, half-mast. Well, I, my guest this morning is um, the director general of... Um, the National Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, and uh, former High Commission of Nigeria to Australia, Ambassador Ayo Olukonye. Ambassador, uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for the invitation. I'm indeed glad to be here. Sad day for Africa. Indeed. Uh, but of course, also I think from it a lot of lessons. I also hopeful times as well ahead. Indeed, and uh, I thought we could talk about that because um, as I tried to, you know, put together uh, when I began, uh, it depends. A man seen from different lenses, depending on who the person yes. was in Ghana and yes, indeed in the region. Um, but St. Alcina, John Jerry Rawlings, or the other way, Jerry John Rawlings, was uh, pivotal um, to the um, political development and even economic development of Ghana. Certainly. Um, perhaps we can say that after the late Kwame Nkrumah, Sagifu, um, the president, the Ghanaian uh, president, um, who envisioned a United States of Africa mm. and made a lot of impact even on, on not only Ghana, Africa, and, and the world at large. Um, I think the next figure is the late John, John, John Rollins, J.J. Rollins. J.J. Rollins. Um, who came, who saw, and then in some ways you can say he conquered mm. and also left his, um, um, he, his mark he, he left his in mark. the history of um, Ghana. Mm. West Africa, on our continent to Africa as well. He, he was something of a romantic figure when you go back to 72. Yeah. Um, the, something of the, almost like Che Guevara or, or even Fidel, uh, Fidel, Fidel Castro. Uh, Fidel Castro the, the, the man was seen in military fatigue. Perhaps I can easily also mention perhaps the late man, Nelson Mandela. Too, Indeed. Well. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, history is replete with figures like uh, J.J. Rollins. Um, if you look at this picture, slim, in the you know, Air Force fat fatigue, mm -hmm. and then him in an helicopter or in an aircraft, right. uh, it tells you that um, there's something different about him in terms of uh, his personality. Because you, you, you have to factor in personalities in terms of the political process itself. That was something about him. And then the manner of his um, being uh, involved in a coup plot um, commissioned, jailed, escaped. I mean, it's the stuff of Nollywood, uh, it, it, Hollywood, it, Hollywood, Hollywood scripts. That's, that's what I see. <laughs> There's the romantic script. aspect yes, to all of that time. It, it is, definitely. Um, I mean, it gives, like, it, we were mentioning figures, like Che Guevara, we were mentioning figures um, like the late um, um, Fidel Castro himself. Um, then if you were to talk about somebody like Chavez, too, as well, who also had a similar uh, experience, um, John G. Rollins would come to us as a, a, a different person altogether, a special personality who had a special role and uh, emerged as a strong political leader uh, who had a lot of impact uh, in Ghana as well as in politics in Ghana as well as West Africa as a whole. And he 
arguably had that very strong connection uh, with the Ghanaian people. Um, I think largely by the unusualness uh, at the time of seeing effectively a head of state, the, the, the leader, and um, he would put his back to the plow. He would be in the trenches. Um, <laughs> he, he, he was physically hands on. It, it was, I, I guess, that enamored him to a lot Certainly, of people. Certainly, I think he must have also been inspired uh, by the works of the late Kwame Nkrumah himself, who was a Pan-Africanist. Um, his famous book, um, Imperialism, the Last Stage of Capitalism, you know, um, uh, Neocolonialism, the Last Stage of Imperialism. Um, I think, the, I, I am very sure these were books and theoretical position which inspired him. But not only that, um, he was also a handsome, a, a hands-on <laughs> person, That's hands-on. Right. Mm. Um, apart from being handsome, hands-on person to us as well, in terms of uh, um, you must, you must concretize the abstraction. You must impact, you must practice practically. And I think that was what we saw in what he did um, in the way, uh, and of course, apart from being a people's man, populism to us all. He gave, he gave, he, 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 he reignited what was lost when Nkrumah passed away. In between the time of Nkrumah and his time, a lot was lost in Ghana. But when he came on board, um, he, found, he, found, he found favor with most of the people. And that, oh, really? Um, I, I, you know, in those days, I remember uh, songs on the street of Ghana, J.J. Rollins, do something before you die. J.J. Mm -hmm. Rollins, mm -hmm. Junior Jesus, do something exactly. before you die. And I think those are some of the things which, uh, of course, uh, people uh, will remember. But, 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 you know, perhaps I should also say this. Um, when you f make efforts to make a revolution, or when you contest elections and you are voted into power, there are two different things altogether. You're being voted into power. And then you taking control of state apparatus to initiate a process of change. You get the point I'm making. Elected, electoral power, you're elected into power, or you even force a revolution, just like what Castro and other days. But it's a different thing altogether when you now to seize control of state apparatus. And actually run it. And actually run it. And actually, and actually run it. You know, I'm very fond of the saying of the late, of, um, late Cuomo to say that you campaign in poetry, uh, but you govern in prose. So when Rawlings himself, you know, quote and unquote, was able to force this revolution mm. and then to now start governing, um, he saw that when he was a military of this, but even more when he became a democratically elected president, that it's a different ball game altogether. Um, but I think on the, on the balance, and, and, he made and, an impact. Indeed, and speaking about that, um, if you go back and look at the history, uh, Jay Rollins himself seemed... Uh, sort of ambivalent towards uh, democracy, Western democracy, as he would have thought of it. Oh, yes. he, he, he had his apprehensions and even thought at one time before he was uh, uh, clearly brought around in his own thinking process because he subsequently founded the party. He didn't think the multi-party system was right for Africa. Uh, oh, oh, you know, you know the, and, the, and for his country. One, I think the issue has been settled itself that, look, listen, uh, democracy is not a destination, it's a, it's a long journey. And all of us, in the human, as human race, we are at different point in the history, I mean, as far as democracy mm -hmm. is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I think somewhere along the line, and that's why I say that, even if you make a revolution, to now start initiating changes and implement imp what, what you want to do, it's a different thing. Altogether. And I think he realized that. And that was why the question of his perception of, look, this democracy, Western democracy, how do we make it relevant for mm. us mm. in Africa? Mm. And a lot of experiment went on. And I think at the end of the day, that was why, of course, he himself said, okay, fine. Um, we, we can't go back to the old one-party state of Africa. Multi-party democracy should it be, but it should be multi-party democracy that will give dividends of democracy itself. And I think those are the things which he tried to do. Indeed. And as somebody coming from the Chambers of Commerce itself, in terms of, apart from the political issue, at the end of the day, uh, people say we're not struggling for ideas in our head. We're struggling for how to put food on the table. And so the economic perspective of what he left behind was quite interesting in terms of, look, listen, some kind of market economy liberalized the economy itself. Uh, in terms of those are some of the things which he did. Mm. And he also made his mark in this particular area. Indeed. Uh, a man much loved in Ghana and in beyond. And, um, uh, you know, let, let's take a package now uh, because we're talking about the man, you know, who has uh, passed at 73. Uh, 73? Yeah, uh, 1944. Yeah. You know, 73, you know, you know, and it's 
only very shortly after Ghana was commiserating with him on the passing of his mother. Uh, you know, um, th these and, things. And I think there was a time, sometimes this year, when there was news or rumors that he passed away. Yeah, indeed. And of course, um, it was like uh, he woke up from the dead to say, hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm still around. Uh, but now, at least, he's, uh, he's done his bit, he's moved on. Indeed. Uh, a, a man much loved, um, JJ, Junior Jesus, at one time. Yes. And then, you know, latterly called by those who love him. Uh, Papa J, you know, in his devoter. Uh, he was a colorful figure. He was. Papa J. So, colorful in, names in, and appellations. In uh, it, uh, indeed. Uh, uh, on for him. In his um, home, uh, Volta region of Ghana. Okay, we have a package. Let's, look, let's watch that package. We come back, I'll continue with the ambassador, and also take your calls. And if the whole lot of us should pick on his seminar, I know we would shake up a crowd. Jerry John Rollins broke into global limelight in 1979 when, as a 32-year-old flight lieutenant of the Ghana Air Force, he was involved in a failed military coup. He was subsequently sentenced to death publicly, but not without winning civilian sympathy through his statements on the social injustice prevalent in the country at the time. Barely one month after, while waiting for the bullets, he was involved in another coup, which this time was successful. The military government, composed of mainly junior officers, handed over to an elected government after 112 days. Eight senior military officers and three former heads of state were executed. Another 300 citizens were abducted and killed, birthing a new generation of leaders in the country. Two years after, on the 31st of December 1981, Jerry Rollins and his men struck again. President Hila Lehman was ousted. For the next nine years, Jerry Rollins led a military government that struggled in many ways to better the lives of the citizens. His economic policies may appear unrealistic most of the time, but undoubtedly channeled towards making life better for the ordinary citizens. In 1992, Jerry Rollins stood for the presidential election and won with 60% of votes cast. Opposition parties alleged that government structures were already built to favor Rollins. In 1996, he was re-elected, albeit by a smaller margin. The major contender, John Kufour's Great Alliance, was an amalgamation of the country's leading opposition parties. Despite some fears of electoral violence, the poll was peaceful and had a 78% turnout. President Rollins retired from public service in 2001 at the end of his tenure. He has spent most of his post-retirement time in giving lectures on African nationalism in universities around the world. Jerry Rollins is part of the last generation of Free Africa Movement, an underground movement of military officers who wanted to unify Africa through a series of coups. He will be remembered as an uncompromising nationalist whose passion for better living for his people cannot be doubted. Uzonna Ononye, TVC News, Lagos. The man J.J. Uh, Rollins, uh, half Scottish, half Ghanaian, that is son of a Scottish father, and a Ghanaian uh, mother. Um, something of a revolutionary, any way you look at it, yeah. even from that report. Yes, that was there. Yeah. Um, you, you, you just look at um, aspects uh, of the man. He, he then later on founded a political party himself. Yeah. But he had an ideology that he seemed to be working with. I think it was, um, um, what's this now? Probity. Uh, accountability and social justice. Yeah. That was especially the social justice part was very very close to his heart. But yes, probity, course. accountability, and you know all of that. Even even here in Nigeria, it's the same thing. Yes, you know, of course, it's the same thing. Probity, accountability, and social justice. But Rollins ran with that. It's always it's always necessary for somebody a figure like that, colorful figure like that, to be known for something. When mm -hmm. you mention Mandela, for example, when you mention somebody like Mandela, you know what he stood for as far as the whole question of anti-apartheid in New Africa and people's uh, uh, man is concerned. Um, of course, that was a very colorful person. And I think in, in, in the, within the international context, um, two figures who we can also remember had a similar uh, profile trajectory. One, somebody like Fidel Castro, like I've said, who at the end of the day, um, when he was caught, or now his famous history will absor absorb me a, a, a speech, easily will absorb me speech, and who eventually also came back um, to, 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 to chart a new path for Cuba in that particular place. Secondly, um, you also remember Chavez 
of, of, of Venezuela. And Chavez also had a similar history, um, being involved in a coup, and at the end of the day, I think, escaped and came back to become the president and um, came with his own political ideology of Chavismo. This is the same thing you've seen in terms of Rawlings, who happens to be, quote and unquote, we can refer to as um, Africa's uh, maybe Fidel Castro, <laughs> you know, in a way. And the point and issue which you've made in terms of uh, what he stood for was quite clear. Property, social justice, mm. and things like that. And, and accountability. And, and accountability, um, which are key and very important issues, and, and very important issues for us, um, both in West Africa and Africa. And if you remember what happened to us in West Africa um, during the crisis we had, um, the crisis of Syria alone, the crisis of Liberia, which Nigeria stood off and played a lot of, in which we were fighting to ensure to democratize West Africa, I think you played a very key and very important role in this particular area against the background of those three issues, Indeed. which of course we've mentioned. You know, you try to get the measure of the man um, and you look at all sorts of indicators. Uh, first of all, his coup, the coup that brought him was um, a junior ranks coup. Yes. That in itself was, was highly improbable and a very, very dangerous affair, but he pulled it off. But the, 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 the thing I wanted to bring up was that he was a flight lieutenant yes, and stayed that way. Yes, when he could easily have been air yes, marshal as yes, these things yes. go. But I think he but, just simply... But he's, uh, what kind of a person... Does, that, that, what, what does that say to us about the man? That tells you that at the end of the day, um, he just sees himself as ordinary as an ordinary Ghanaian too as well. And that, uh, look, let us leave labels for whiskey bottles hmm. and do the work. And do the work. Yes, that is and not of course so you, find, you find us also in the late Thomas Sankara Indeed. and those group of people yeah. who had a clear cut ideological orientation hmm. in terms of, look, listen, as far as Africa is concerned, for us to be able to be relevant and to take our people out of the crisis where we are, um, we must have a clear cut, it must be people's orientated as far as all, all our issues are concerned. Indeed. Uh, but, um, but, 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 but the question and issue which I think Rawlings and others also face is that, look, listen, um, poverty is not contaminous with revolutionary consciousness. Poverty is not contaminous with revolutionary consciousness. That the fact that you are poor does not mean you're going to be revolutionary. You have to be conscientized. You have to be educated to know, listen, this position because the poor also just want to step onto the position exactly. of the rich and let's continue and the way continue they were continue. Continue. it is my turn now to enjoy it's, it's a phenomenal uh, you know so i think those are some of the things we saw point ambassador. In, in uh, thank you very much uh, for holding on please go ahead sir good morning mr yuri good morning our guests in the studio good morning mr Dayon, the date of jerry john rollins is a great blue and it is after the African continent. Look at the people that fought the World War over 25 years ago. Some of them are still available. We saw them, that was uh, some Cuba when they celebrated the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Some of them are still anchors. They drive their cars up to today. Now, what do we see today? You see what Kubrick has done. The legal thing he left behind as terrorists is concerned. You see, tolerance. Found up and speak out, don't be afraid. Be bold. At least he did. At least many people now in Ghana have been repeating what the Foundation General is. I agree that we saw the, 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 the scenario to, from Kukasa to your he came into power. After completing the scenario, what did he do? He said that the church, he was just working as a church, serving as a sick man, which what African leaders do. When you have seen the history, talk his father, come back to Nigeria, what do you see? He didn't have. It's rather thing what Nigeria. Well, we have another general in Mali. I hope you copy from what to happen in Ghana, at least in future, with another general is coming. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day. Yeah, indeed. Uh, thank you very much. Um, he, he's being born, you know, all, all over the. the I, I, I think taking a cue from what he said, um, I think <laughs> the lessons we should learn. Um, that at the end of the day, um, as human beings, we have our time here. And, uh, but the most important thing, of course, is that um, what legacies did he leave behind? How much can that inspire, especially younger generations of Africans? That is key. That what I mean, just like we, when we remember Mandela, mm -hmm. um, what legacy did he leave behind? How much can such legacy help? And I think that should be the focus in terms of a post. John Jerry Rollins' lifetime mm. now. Mm. 
Um, I'm sure a lot of books will be written and things like that. Recently, we've just lost another item. Somebody here, the late Barabi Musa, whom I refer to as one of the remnant of the left that is left on the left. Indeed. One Indeed. of the remnant of the left that is left on the left, who left so much for us in terms of uh, um, a people's ideology, in terms of making sure that politics is all about better lives for the lives of the, for the, for the people. Continuing, Period, the that is, continuing the ideas of his mentor, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, Amin Okano. Yeah, yeah, I mean, from the PRP times yes, up to that's, time. That's it. And f he, he, he stayed the course till the very end and it's as an inspiration for younger people in terms of, uh, you know. And I think it's the same thing which I think we should take away as far as Rollins is concerned. In, in, indeed, and um, not to overstress on it, but it is what they are saying in Ghana. This, this trilogy of, um, you know, probity, accountability, and, um, and social um, justice, and, and social justice uh, which his own party, which I believe is the president's party? Yes. Yes, yes, he, he, his own party, you know, no doubt it, it will be important. What experiences they're having with it is another question altogether. I, 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 I also feel... Uh, one moment, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, let me bring in uh, Mr. Abubakar in Kaduna. Good morning, Mr. Abubakar. Let me bring in uh, Mr. Abubakar in Kaduna. No, not in Kaduna, Katia. Katsina. Oh, Katsina. Not the Katsina, Katsina. Katsina. You're welcome, sir. Yes, Katsina. Yes. Yes, we'll fix yes, it. Sir. Yes. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yes, Pl yes. Please, please go on. Thank you, my great... Uh, yes. All right. Okay, okay. About the... Can, can you... Can, can you... Uh, uh, hello? Uh, Abu Bakr. Yes. Abu Bakr, can you mute the volume of your TV set? You, can, hello? you can't listen to yourself on your TV. Hello? Okay. Kill the volume of your TV, please. Okay. Okay, okay, I'll do this. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Mm -hmm. I want to contribute about that the topic that you're talking about, the death of our African leader, not only Ghana. This is a person. Thing. So it's, uh, the death of this person is for Africa. All Africa. So I'm very moved about the death of this, uh, our hero. Yes, Jerry I, Rawlings. I really moved. Former yes. president of Ghana. Yes. So I want to this to Yes. Condolence to all African people. All right then. Uh, well, thank you very all much right. for calling in, Abu Bakr. Um, you know, the, the ordinary night. You know, his, his name carried. It, it went far and wide, yes, probably because of the things we've spoken about before something of a revolutionary, something of a dramatic a personality, a mm. colorful one. Uh, you saw him as an African um, numero uno uh, 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 in his country, uh, but, but still, you know, was building a hoe at one point. A lot of it might have, some of those things, you know, they know how to arrange their PR and publicity. But the point I'm making is that he was a colorful guy, and uh, perhaps a lot of youth identify with him yes, still as they did. Yes, um, I think what happened with such figures like this in history, um, their colorful um, oratory skills, um, people just, uh, ordinary people, you know, they look, the question of issues of leadership is key and very important in this particular area. Um, in terms of, uh, um, you know, people look up to others. When you have superior ideas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they tend to listen and, to you. And, and, and then when you can also convey your message, to people, people will listen to you and make sense of that. So they get out. There's, 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 it's, it's, there's something which is attractive about it. About the, about the, the whole person. About the, the old person now. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Galatima, uh, good morning, sir. Go on, please. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, to contribute to this. I think uh, Nigerians, or let me say Africa in general, will seem not to celebrate our heroes when they are dead. We only talk about them after they are gone. And there is no, you know, a kind of a way that has been developed in order to inspire the younger generation about the legacies of these heroes of our democracy, heroes of governance of the past. For instance, I watched a little documentary on TVC just a while before you came on the air about mm -hmm. Good Luck, the Bellet Journal. Okay. Where they shot clip a kind of extolled 
is democratic, you know, virtue of giving power, or let me say, allowing a peaceful transition, you know, to take place, to accept defeat honorably and live power. You know, these are the things that we need to be more. You know, our younger generation, there are so many people that we talk about Jerry Rawlings, they don't know who is Jerry Rawlings. That's right. The younger generation, the age, 20, 30, cannot say anything about Jerry Rawlings. They may be just hearing it now because he's dead. Okay. Must we always celebrate our heroes after they are gone? Thank you very much, Let Mr. Galadima. You. Thank you very much. Appreciate your calling in, Mr. Galadima. Um, uh, and the point that you make as well, um, that why does it seem that, you know, uh, this, this, what you've just said um, happens? Well, uh, you know, it's... I, I think it's, it's, it's part of life. It is. Generally. And, and so, um, sir, he, he mentioned that he was watching a TVC, you know, mini documentary on the former uh, president... Uh, and especially extolling his virtue, the virtue in particular of handing over to a democratically yes. elected. That just reminded me that, and Rawlings, Rawlings' second coming, yes, it, it was just for two years. He was around, and he organized a democratic election to take, you know, to to, to hand back to uh, Ghana uh, the I, leadership. I, I think each leader in history, um, one way or the other, leaves his mark, either for good or for bad. And um, the fact and the question and issues of, oh, celebrating them after they are gone, um, they, their death brings Memories. them back yes. frontally yes. to us, to confront. The exploits. Yes. It brings it yeah. back into the present. Back into the present. So that is natural. That's what happened. But there's a dimension which I think um, one of the callers has also mentioned in terms of um, serving as inspiration for, for the youth. Okay. And I think this is key and very important. Um, I think we need to, more, we need to get on to get our youth, Nigerian youth in Africa generally, Question to be more interested in the political process. It is very, very important. Is, is it your experience, Ambassador, now that you go there, that yes. um, our youths are not, as it were, conscientized, uh, generally Definitely. speaking, uh, to the importance of, of, of the political process? I, and I give a practical example. I went to the great Ife, the University of Ife, and the university environment where we were, when we studied in those days, is totally different from what it is today. Generally, of course, education received a large share in those days. This was the days in which you even, how much we used to feed? 50 cover, 50 cover, 50 cover. That is one, I mean, how much is that? One hundred fifty. But more importantly, it was a campus, it was a university campus, tertiary education that was involved in political education. You have seminars, workshops, you belong to different groups, or to Azuri, Alliance of Progressive Students, you belong to the social, Young Socialist Movement. So by the time you go through that process, you're one way or the other. You are politically educated, you are conscious. Most of the universities- But we don't bother anymore. Yeah, most, I mean, you know, the Even crisis secondary of the, schools, some used to have civics. The, yes, yes, I mean, the crisis, in those days, and I remember when we were in university, you learn a lot about you know, Marxism, socialism, you read books, or, I mean, uh, uh, great figures in history. You are part of the university environment where you are conscientized politically. So you have that political consciousness there. So that is why I think it is. I, 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 I think I should, we should make reference to the Next Generation Nigerian Report. Nigeria Next Generation. And I would strongly recommend that. 2010, which looked at Nigeria within the demographic lens and came to the conclusion that Nigeria's future, of course, is tied to its youth. And that what we do with our youth in terms of education, in terms of good health, in terms of uh, uh, the process of bringing them up to take over is what will determine the future of Nigeria. And I think I, 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 I come from Nasima. And in Nasima, the Chambers of Commerce movement, which used to be you know, known for big um, businessmen and all that. We said, look, listen, when these big businessmen and elderly ones pass on, who takes over? And that's why we have Nasima Youth Entrepreneurs. Okay. There's a youth entrepreneur scheme yeah. that brings in young people into the chambers movement early enough. The moment you start your own business, you're 20, you're 30, you're in your youth, we encourage you to be part of Nasima Youth. So, they are brought in and educated in terms of the chambers and commerce movement. The same thing should happen 
the and I think our, in, in, edu our university and tertiary institutions are easily a very, very key part of our educational process to conscientize and educate our people so that they can know people. Because like you said, I mean, if you ask young people today, Rollins, yeah, um, it was. Uh, yeah, I they, think it was Galapagos. They see the picture. The point. You know, well, it was military. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, but yeah, exactly. in terms of what he did, yeah, his, uh, his ideological orientation, mm -hmm. his policies, his, um, they were not maybe he's you, on the Twitter. You, you, exactly, and um, you know, it it might not just be. Uh, even in Ghana itself, yes. because since since the news, yes, I've been watching Ghana TV, you know, and taking it, also seeing their perspective. Yes. And um, the youth in Ghana are pretty much in the same situation you've just spoken yes, about. Course. They, the youths, when they spoke to them, they remember him because of the the image, as it were, and their parents. But they're not. They they, they just are not old enough to have actively been involved uh, at the time in in the. In the, I, 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 if, shall if we you, call it the ideological if forming? Ask, if you ask a lot of young people in Nigeria now um, about the late Mutala Muhammad, who was also a, a colorful mm -hmm. figure for no us clue. at a particular period, yeah, right. um, anything about him, maybe if they say, oh, was he assassinated? I think he was that the one that was assassinated. And, and if it. you ask, just a minute, if you ask again about the Abiola elections, 1993, yes. Yes. Uh, the what did they say happened that time? They said the council election. Or Those are the things you will get. And it's the very point Galadima was making. That is, so we need to take on the question and issues of education as young people. And because the question will ask, where do you recruit your political leadership from? From what, where do you recruit your political leadership from? If you recruit your political leadership from a core of young people who have no clue about the political process or political history, how the democracy is coming for. You get this, I mean, you will just get a large number of a young set of people who will not have any clue on what to do when they find themselves in power. The man, since we're talking about the man, Jay Rawlings, yeah. and he's passed on, but history uh, uh, remains. It's, it's, it's also interesting looking a bit into the personality of the man, uh, as I said, and as is well known, he's half Scot, half Ghanaian, mm -hmm. but he identified uh, with Ghana. I guess he could have, you know, swung yes, either sir. way, but he sort of cast his lot as it was. We know, with the people. With, with the people and, um, you know, his mother, you know, quite frankly, it's his mother who was very Ghanaian. But the point I'm making is that there are people who might have wanted to, you know, start their journey in life elsewhere, but there's something about um, the man's feeling for the people that he was among. You cannot take him out of the context of the history of Ghana and what people like late Osagi for Kwame Nkrumah did itself. You cannot take it out. His generation as a military officer um, are very, very much aware of the role which he played. And I think that influenced his position, his views a lot in terms of uh, you know, what can be done to advance the vision of the pioneer leaders. I think, I think, I think, I think that is it. That is the existential, that was an existential reality for him in terms of what exactly he did and what he developed. To do. And don't forget, it was a period in time in Africa uh, when coups were, were popular as, a, as an avenue mm. um, to resolve crises, uh, political crises, and, and economic crises too as well. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, when we have, we have problems as far as the economy service is concerned, don't forget, I'll give you an example of the structural adjustment program. Uh, the respective coups which we had, Bangida and all of that, um, also have uh, tied up to the economic, the search for an appropriate economic model to be able to deal with the issues of development at that particular period. Um, so he fell within that particular period. Uh, but, like I, but like we said, um, uh, when, of course, it was, the coup was no longer fashionable, and um, people now are asking questions because the military themselves, through the coup, um, destroyed not only the, I mean, not only affected negatively the country, but even the military as an institution itself. Because when they left and uncle and suddenly become a state governor, and a major general is there in the doctrine session, treating, you know, a, a battle scheme, and is not able to resolve. He will go and sit in the outside office of the left now corner, who is the governor. But anyway, uh, that was why I think one of the reasons was said, look, listen, let the people decide through the democratic process who will run our affairs. And of course, he did a lot to help in terms of ensuring that West Africa does, I mean, throws away 
the crisis, the issues of code plotting, and then of course democratize the entire space in West African stories. And I think we, I think he did a lot in this area. And that was why he was appointed several times uh, to be on peace mission. And of course, as a personality, yes, AU, as a personality who's been through it, actually. Um, is what they listen to him and he has credibility. Okay. Uh, a final call today on this uh, subject. Uh, Mr. Babatunde in Oshodi, good morning. Are you ready, Mr. Babatunde in Oshodi? Doesn't look like it. Uh, okay. I, 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 I can also refer to his affinity, his closeness to Nigeria. Um, he was always here for one thing or the other. Uh, don't forget the symbiotic relations between Ghana and Nigeria. Um, we share a lot together, apart from the football. The, the rivalry. <laughs> the, the rivalry <laughs> in the football. Um, late President John, John, I mean, J.J. Rollins was also in Nigeria because he had a lot of friends in Nigeria. And during this period, too, um, relationship between Nigeria as both head of state. Uh, so you can see that um, it was somebody who also cared very much and recognized the importance of Nigeria within the region and worked closely uh, with our leaders as well as various uh, other groups in, uh, to advance uh, the, the, the relations between us as well as also make sure that, look, let's, your country must, as in terms of leadership in West Africa, uh, play its rightful role. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Ayo Olukoni, yeah, thank you uh, very much, for, for sharing your insights with us. Um, DG uh, Nasima, for taking time away from your desk, um, to, you know, because it's important and we, we, we knew that um, there would be worthwhile uh, perspectives um, um, that um, you could share. Thank you very well, much for well, Thank on. you very much. I sincerely hope that figures like Lee or Jeremy Rollins um, will also provide us a reference point in terms of his ideas and mm -hmm. what he did mm -hmm. as an inspiration for younger Nigerians and younger you know, Africans too in terms of their role uh, for development of the continent. Stay with us, please. We'll be right back. <laughs>